ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Very nice to, uh, very nice to see you all here. And uh, let me just begin, if I may, by saying a, uh, a huge thank you to our organisers uh, this morning, Vanessa and, and, and Andrea, for bringing together once again such an incredibly diverse range of people to share views and experiences. It seems to me that in a world that moves at a breakneck pace 24-7, can be really hard to carve out the time to think. To set aside the day-to-day, -day, you know, that email that you absolutely think you have to reply to in the next five minutes. And just recheck that we haven't become so bogged down in the, in the tactics of the of the day-to-day -day, that we've completely lost sight of the, of the bigger picture, of our strategy to do the best uh, in our jobs, for our families, and for our friends. So that's why these two days will be, I know, a, a feast for the mind and soul, and if I may say so, knowing the very special hospitality here, there'll be quite a feast for the body as well. So thank you, uh, thank you for that. Um, it's a real honour to be invited to open a TEDx conference in Marrakesh for the second time. And standing here in the heart of Morocco, there are constant reminders that this country represents a literal and metaphorical crossroads. Of course, the Romans believed it was here that Hercules separated the continents of Africa and Europe. The Kingdom of Morocco, which, let's not forget, once included most of uh, southern Spain within its Moorish kingdom, has always marked a point where Islam and Christendom meet, and has long provided a tolerant and welcoming home for a thriving Jewish community. And as those who know this country a bit as, as I do know, um, the visual reference points are absolutely everywhere throughout Morocco. We see the shell's uh, motif of St. James on, on ancient Islamic gateways, the Star of David alternating with the Christian cross and the eight-pointed Star of Islam on the 18th century tomb of Sultan Mullah Ismail in, uh, in Meknes. So this country and its diverse communities are so ancient that it's worth pausing for just a moment to think about the relationship between those communities, and not just in Morocco, but around the world. And with this potent and highly positive imagery in our minds, I'd like us to take just a moment to think about how this maps onto the community in which we ourselves live. I think looking at this in microcosm, in the context of our own neighbourhood, might be helpful. Because when we scale back up to the global level, as people have been saying to me in the room already this morning, today's theme always look on the bright side, does present on the face of it a bit of a challenge. Our TVs, radios, tablets, smartphones are bombarded every day by horrendous scenes of intercommunal suffering from around the world. The so-called Islamic State, a remarkable misnomer when you think about it since it is neither Islamic nor a state, sinks ever deeper into savagery and depravity. Refugees pour out of Iraq and Syria themselves ancient cradles of civilization and learning from which the Western world has benefited so much into neighboring countries such as Jordan and Lebanon. If we doubted for a moment the impact of globalization, of just how interconnected our world has become, there's a pretty loud wake-up call in the way these apparently far away dramas are translating swiftly into dramas rather closer to home. Only last month, we all saw the fundamental right to free speech in France turn into murder and hostage-taking on the streets of Paris. Countries around the world, including here in Morocco and in my own country, the United Kingdom, have raised our national threat levels for terrorist attack. But I just want to bring us back to our own neighbourhoods, because most troubling of all, I think, is the growing evidence that in many communities, neighbours are starting to look at each other in new and darker ways. People who've lived side by side in peace for years, looking after each other's children, perhaps even taking in the washing when it rains, are starting to look, are suddenly placing heavy emphasis on what distinguishes us from one another, rather than promoting the sense of neighbourhood and community that unites us. Too often, as we all know, that division follows religious lines. The three great Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, were revealed within a few thousand miles of each other in what is now the Middle East. Yet in the modern day Middle East, Christians are being driven from their homes simply for belonging to the minority. In Germany, in France, and indeed in the UK, 
Jewish and Muslim organisations have been targeted purely for being Jewish or Muslim and are now under police protection. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know that tolerance and understanding across the boundaries of faith and community are essential if we're to live in a peaceful, stable and economically flourishing society. Yet, in a growing number of communities, that simple truth is being forgotten or even willfully ignored. Indeed, we could be forgiven for asking ourselves, is the world going completely mad? Now, you may be wondering when I'm going to come to the bright side. So, with an eye on the clock, let me do that right now. Because I want to share with you a couple of examples of people who are refusing to buy into this narrative of suspicion and division and worse. People who, through simple gestures, are promoting the values of tolerance and understanding that are the foundation of any civilised society. In my own country, in the city of Bradford, the secretary of a mosque and an Asian-oriented business centre have joined together to secure the long-term future of a synagogue, a simple but highly symbolic act of unity between Bradford's Muslim, Jewish and Asian origin communities. To share something more personal, one of the aspects of my last job when I was Private Secretary to the Prince of Wales that I loved the most was the opportunity to assist His Royal Highness in planning countless royal events to draw our fellow Britons together, irrespective of faith or ethnic origin. And here's another example. Despite all the turbulence in Egypt, like me, you may have spotted the powerful images a couple of weeks ago of Christian protesters standing together, hands joined, facing outwards, to protect hundreds of Muslims as they knelt in prayer. Only last week, we saw a similar act in Oslo, but this time, it was a thousand Muslims forming a symbolic human shield around a synagogue following the murder by an Islamic extremist of two people, including one at Copenhagen's Great Synagogue. And finally, another example closer to home. Here in Morocco, I think we were all hugely impressed when the Prime Minister, who leads an Islamist party, attended the reopening of a synagogue just up the road from here in Fez in 2013. Ladies and gentlemen, from these simple acts of kindness, I think we can draw an equally simple but vital lesson. Our actions matter. We know what happens when we become aware of growing divisions within our local community. We know what happens when we do nothing, even though we know deep down that we should do something or say something. We know what happens when we buy into that primal, powerful, almost tribal narrative that makes us think first, and sometimes more, about how others are different from us, rather than searching for common ground. We know all this in abstract, of course, but how many of us can really point to something we've actually done in the last little while to counter these pernicious trends? At the most basic level, how well do we actually know our neighbour? So, just perhaps, now is the time for all of us not just to think and talk a good game, but to act. Like the Christian, Jewish, Muslim and Asian origin community, make my use of the singular, in Bradford. Or those people in Cairo or Oslo who saw neighbours in need of their help and responded instinctively. Perhaps, like the Prime Minister of Morocco, we can all find a small but symbolic way to reach out to someone who's different from us, but is a neighbour and a potential friend nonetheless. In these ways, we all have the power to change the world immediately around us for the better. Looking on the bright side, as we are today, we might all stand just a little taller in the process. And the cumulative effect of that, it seems to me, in the best TEDx tradition, is an idea worth sharing. Thank you.